Okay, uh, I would like to call to order the March 10th, 2020 uh, meeting of the Village Board of Village Trustees. And I uh, would like to start with uh, citizen comments. Seeing a bunch of citizens. Yes, Beth. Um, I um, just wanted to share with the trustees um, both the proposed, which we will be talking with the EDC about on Thursday night, and hopefully we'll have a public hearing about the proposed litter receptacle that <laughs> takes in both recycling and it's two for one so we would just have one barrel the same size as all the barrels 45 gallons um, that is recycling on one side and um, trash on the other we've met with um, Casella they were in favor of it we have enough money presently to buy six Eight. Eight. We're hoping to ask for a little bit more so that we can get ten and have them in the immediate downtown village area. How much did these cost then? Oh, the same as all the trash cans are about twenty one hundred dollars. Even just, mean, for, just, for a, just for a single, well, didn't we look at some doubles for about they that? Were, no, they were in the they three thousand money. They, they were, were in the three thousand dollar range. Yeah. I know, it's not, I, I understand. <laughs> I'm not kidding, right? Do they have to be some kind of ballistic protection because to protect against some No, I mean, we have, um, right now, the, the village, you know, pretty historic village has 55 gallon plastic drums out there. Does the job, they look terrible. You can do that. The EDC, through the 1%, has. Um, <laughs> approved spending for these how much, so how much trash does each side hold or how much 22 gallons each oh, so it's almost that 45 gallon amount that you'd get in a one right. in a one drum right also they get moved around a lot so they do take a lot of abuse yeah, yeah. and the snow plow uh, although most of them are gone in the winter anyway um, well, as you know, the, the trustees have historically been supportive of uh, sturdy, better looking, more representative for Woodstock uh, uh, trash receptacles. So, um, so long as the EDC comes up with uh, the money and they have right. already agreed to pay for a certain amount. For eight at least, yeah. and now we're going to see if we can get ten. Mm -hmm. um, and we again met with Casella, they approve. Um, and we, there will be a public hearing, hopefully on Thursday night, so if you'd like to come and talk about them, pros and cons, come to the EDC meeting at 7 o'clock. The other advantage of these is they take up a much smaller footprint on the sidewalk. Yeah. You only need one instead of, because you're mandated by the state of Vermont to have two for, for recycling and litter. Did Casal mention having to pick up more often because you have less of each? He did not think that it would be problem. a problem. Really? Yeah. Because that often, was always Phil's big concern. Is that often, there was all, um, they would get overflowed and it's just a big mess. He uh, In the summer they pick up three times a week. <clears throat> and if they see it overflowed, they will stop more. But in, historically, we've always had, always had contingents of where they put out extra ones of like the surplus that we've kept stored away when there's going to be events and stuff return. like that or yeah. that we're known busy times. The taste of Woodstock specifically, we rented <coughs> 10 litter tubs. I mean, half recycled, half Totes. litter. Totes. Yeah. Um, specifically for that day so that the trash receptacles didn't get overflowing. A lot of times they're not actually overflows. People won't push the stuff in. So if you just take your foot and put your shoe in there and just knock it down, it works much better. And then it's pretty much empty underneath. So and that's the first thing. You can <laughs> just call me. I'm at <laughs> I have to ask before you move from the receptacles, is, has compost come up at all just because of the, no. Um, Nobody talks about it. You don't have to do compost. Not on the street. No. Right. Right. So nobody's talking. Okay. All right. No. Great. Because what we That's learned fine. today from one of the people that is intimately 
um, involved with, with trash and recycling is that if you get one piece of garbage or litter in your <coughs> recyclable, they throw the whole thing away. They trash it, they don't compost right. it uh, or recycle any of it. Yeah. And so the second thing I, I am bringing to you, um, which the EDC and the chamber are working on collaboratively, are the um, new um, flower baskets. They, what we would be doing is buying um, arms, preferably like this, kind of as a hook, and then um, buy flower baskets that can get <coughs> replanted year after year. Once we get the um, arms up, we will be able to then hang the baskets without the amount of work that it takes. If anybody's been downtown when we've been putting up or taking down or participated in that, um, it's labor intensive and we had an 80 year old person up on the ladder helping put them up last year. Um, so hopefully this will be less labor intensive. We'll still be working with the high school. So Carrie brought up a good point. Uh, one, one potential problem is, in, in sometimes we get some pretty good wind storms, and these are swinging. You can right? tie some fish line from each pot to the, to the pole, and it won't swing. To the pole? Yep. And know that for my sign that's on the store, I was heavily warned never to attach it to something, and I don't know, I know it's a sign as opposed to this, but the wind is going to hit these just as it hit those. It's supposed to swing freely. I, I d how is there a possibility to research into how much it would cost to replace the ones that we had in the look that we had it? Well, because we're not even given an option here. Not for really. That. It's they're labor intensive. No, I know. And so I hope people understand that how that, labor intensive it is. That and Kathy, help Kathy, it, so. myself, Ray, a couple Rotarians have been, thank heavens, we've had Serve Pro in the past and Coda and Coda has sent a person, but we have volunteers um, putting them up and taking them down. And so the old ones. Twice a year. What? They all have to come down twice a year. Right, they do, okay. and, but they're, um, they're going away. They're gonna be put out on the surf if anyone would like one or two. And they're going away because they're in bad shape. Yes. And the, they're labor the, intensive. Mostly because they're in bad shape. They're mostly because they're in bad shape. 11 years old. When we put them up in 2009. But they're like iron, right? Yeah, the, the metal that they bolt, the bolts go into the, the uh, pole itself. Uh -huh. And if they don't, if, if they slide or they, they can, you know, and now the bolts are all rusted, so there's no, no adjustment. And it's just, these will go up and stay up, and that, that's it. And then we just have to They're hang the baskets. Oh, so these are up year, year round. round. We can take the Even baskets without off. without baskets. Without yeah. baskets, the posts will be. They're going to hang Christmas decorations. <clears throat> well, if you, so if you stabilize them so that they're somewhat immune to the wind, that would be a good idea, right? Well, we can research. I mean, we can talk yeah. to the people that make them. Are, which which design are you proposing? The hook arm or the? I personally like the hook arm. Our board hasn't made a decision yet. We'll go to the. I think that's the nicest looking one. But it's far. also the least expensive. No, the most. It's the most expensive. Oh, it's the most expensive. Oh, yeah. No wonder I like it. That's why we like it. <laughs> huh. Okay. Yeah, so I like that one far. the best too. I do too. But I will I will say I think it will have an impact on on the way it looks. I mean, you're going to notice them way more. But you have two yes. per pole. I think it'll one. change the landscape, the streetscape, quite a bit. I, I feel. In a good way? Um. I mean, after the pots, in a good way? We're not having pots this year. <laughs> no pots. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know, honestly. It's an opportunity to have more flowers up yeah there. no I do like the idea of, of having something year round potentially up on the poles no. outside of the lights just no, we the lights we just have to decide what size we get up to like a it just feels very like basket. McDonald's no. Sorry. 
Yeah. Um, do those particular hangers come as singles or do you have to get them as doubles? They can come as singles. Mm. So what we've had really in the past has been two, two pots that make one. Yeah. And I'm kind of like, so honestly, I'm thinking that with the size of the pots that we've had in the past, I kind of wonder if this is an overkill. I saw the design earlier today, and I'm, I just think it might be overkill. I think it's too much. That's that's because they have the largest hanging basket they can have on those. Okay. Which is probably, I think, 36 or 48 inches. I wish that picture You wish you had what? I'm not sure what we have now, so I have Oh, I'm sure I could find it on my phone. Yeah. Well, you I, can, look, I can go look and imagine it. Yeah, they're pretty good size. It's cool. Yeah, it's just yeah. so clean the way that they were just on the pole, right. you know, versus this thing hanging. It'll be the same plant. Anything new that must be tough to take. Has the, has the arrangements been made with the school? The Pardon? Have the arrangements been no, made? No, we, we do that in after April vacation. And has the school decided to continue the greenhouse program? This year? The, for this year. I yeah. think. Let's all hope that they continue to do the greenhouse program. I think it'd be a real shame. There's talk of doing away with it. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. At the uh, middle and high school. You um, know, if anybody has comments <laughs> or want to come talk to us or whatever, please, you know, email me, call me, well, call board. Thank you board. for working on it. Thank you, Beth. Thanks, I, Beth. Yes, Thank Wendy? You. I'm here for citizen comment. Yes. That's why I raised my hand. Yeah. Um, I'm back representing the Faulkner Park Working Group, mm -hmm. Wendy Marion. Um, and I brought a letter we presented to the select board uh, la at their last meeting that we wanted to share, and it's addressed to you guys as well. And it's just a, a next step following a meeting from the select board. Uh, when we met and they recommended or con the consideration of a citizens committee and so we are offering some suggestions in this letter and you saw this before you did right and we wanted to include it in your minutes too um, it, in summary uh, I don't the select board is on hold right now on making decisions and talking about it but the last launch of ideas was the citizens uh, committee that would get, make recommendations to the select board. Whether they pursue that or not is unclear, but that was our response. This is our response to um, suggested ways or people to include in such a committee. Because um, we are earnestly interested in supporting a broad look at this and, and, and considering alternatives. And if you have any questions from the last time I was here, if anything's come up, I mean, I'm open to trying to answer them if, if any of them are available. Well, I've got okay. questions. Are there any, is anyone else? I've heard nothing but actually support for your proposal. Looking at it closely and seeing where we could do better, right? Yeah. yeah. Right? Thank you. Thank you. Any other citizen comments today, tonight? Uh, hearing none, let's move on. Uh, additions to uh, the post and agenda. Um, I have, we have one in particular, um, and that's, that's something that's been on everybody's mind and uh, on their hands. Uh, the coronavirus and COVID-19. And the Woodstock Emergency uh, Management Group has been very busy, and we have David here tonight. And perhaps he can uh, talk to us but, uh, uh, about this, but I want people at home to be aware that if you have any questions or need assistance with food, water, medications, financial assistance having to do with this situation, please contact Woodstock Emergency Management, 457-7516. You can also contact our fire chief at 457-7517. Um, and get uh, answers to that. And David, do you have some things you might like to add to this? Uh, I can give you an update, a brief update. That would be that would be great. Thank you. So, uh, as Jeff said, Woodstock Emergency Management met Monday morning with our vulnerable population uh, representatives, mainly nursing homes, assisted living, the schools, 
um, Thompson Senior Center and uh, Rotary was there as well. Max Market has input. And we put a plan in place for people who are either self-quarantining or mandatory quarantining um, that they don't have to venture out into the public. Um, so what we are doing is offer the assistance if they are um, elderly or only um, themselves and don't have a care provider, we'll take care of all that for them. Um, while we are doing that, we do want to be you know, well aware that we're, we're just trying to contain what's there. So by washing your hands, using standard precautions and everything, um, adults who are in good health really have no worry or limited worry. Uh, because if you do get the uh, virus, it's like a mild cold up to mild flu symptoms generally. So it's not the end of the world should it come, but we're trying to keep our vulnerable population away from those people. And that's one of the reasons we're doing this. Um, so that being said, washing your hands, don't touch your face. Um, if you do feel sick, uh, you know, stay home from work if you need to, if you can telecommute, stuff like that, that'd be great. Um, Jeff said Woodstock Emergency Management Line is open and manned 24 hours now at dispatch. So if there is a need, it can be any time in the night. Um, the CDC and Vermont Department of Health have great guidance for any population from households to schools to giant corporations. They also have um, business plan templates should Woodstock get hit hard for business owners on how to recover from that, how to bring in help, how to stay and hope it uh, open. Uh, Frank, Robbie, and I are meeting Thursday. Robbie doesn't know it yet. We have a meeting Thursday. Um, <laughs> to work on that business plan to keep Woodstock essential services, sewer, highway, police, up and running, should it get hit hard in this town. Um, so I think we're pretty good right now. We're monitoring. Um, there is uh, a couple self core teams. One we are helping with, the other ones do not need help. Um, one thing I am recommending is that maybe we think about, because they're saying rooms like this for vulnerable population and <coughs> that's over 60, um, really should six foot apart. Um, maybe we move village meeting downstairs where there's more room to <coughs> spread out and I have cleared it with Anita, so it's your wishes on what you want to do. We did that last year mm -hmm. Phil, so. Are we going to have to yell at each other? Idea. Right have to yell, but there is a PA system and microphones. And <laughs> yeah, we used it last year. Yeah, yeah, I think let's, 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 let's for the, the village meeting. It worked last year. It, I'm just... They are recommending it. Typically, the village crowd is somewhat older. Uh, it's your discretion. There's no mandatory reason to do it. But um, well, in terms of the, the need for space, I don't think we need to. On the other hand, due to your, the concerns you're bringing up, perhaps we should for that reason. So it just feels weird when uh, you know you have a big place and you know 40 people. But if it's safer, if it's safer, we should do it that way. Um, also, the microphone, if it's two microphones shared between everybody, you know, you're back to square one, right? Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> what do the trustee, fellow trustees think about definitely this? definitely have a downstairs. One definitely downstairs. Yeah, let's do it downstairs. And then everybody has yeah. to show. I'm fine with the meeting downstairs. I, All right. We, like I said, we did it once before. We can do it again. We'll do it again. Maybe we can get Pentangle to put up a cartoon first or something <laughs> for entertainment. Um, all right, we will we'll, uh, notify folks uh, that the annual meeting will be in the town hall theaters and uh, make arrangements for such, Frank. Thank you. Um, any questions for David, by the way? Thank you very much. Yep, thank you. That, uh, Either of those numbers will get somebody 24 hours a day. And if you have questions, uh, dispatch will vet it. So you may not get somebody at midnight. They may say, well, that's not an emergency. We'll have them call back during business hours, except, but you can call anytime and have that, get your answers uh, as they, as 
whatever it's best. I think it's uh, really interesting that uh, that you have volunteered if somebody is quarantined uh, to have the ability to call into Max Market and uh, order their food by credit card, and you will help assist that process. Someone has to pick it up, uh, but. Yep, so they won't call in the max market. There's no, they call into you, right? Huh? They call into emergency services? Yeah, they're going to call emergency management, right. and uh, we'll get it all vetted. There's a procedure, because max, max market doesn't want to deal with 200 people making phone calls, so they only want one person. You have the whole town quarantine themselves. It's not delivered to their house. Yeah. Right. They still have to pick it up. And I think uh, we're going to do the same thing for medication. We've also vetted out, uh, gone out to Pomfret Bridgewater. Uh, they really didn't have a plan in place and offered this to them because most of these residents will come to Woodstock to get groceries or medication. So uh, we're also helping them to get make sure their residents stay where they're supposed to and don't come it's to our. Great idea of being proactive. Yeah. And the health center, they're good. They're Right now, prepared and yep. Do they study. have tests? Uh, they do That's not yet. I okay. think the only place is Lebanon right now. That have tests? Uh, yes. Okay. And it's my understanding it's at the airport. You drive up and get a shot in the arm and drive yeah. away. Yep. Okay, thank you. Yes. Moving along, a request for permits, use of the Village Green. Uh, the first one up is uh, Easter Egg Hunt, Hunt Vicky Ferentinos. Now, Vicky's not here tonight, but she did send an email explaining she couldn't be here. Um, this is basically a bit of a repeat of what she did last year for the first time, which was a big success and a lot of fun for those who participated. The kids loved it, and she's going to have even more. Uh, she intends to have even more uh, eggs available and hidden on the green uh, Sunday, April 12th, 9 a.m. start time till, till 10.30 in the morning. I move to approve as submitted. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. So the, that's passed. And uh, thank you, Vicky. <coughs> Vicky is the uh, former owner of Soulfully Good for those who want to place placer. All right, next up is uh, Bookstock 2020. 2020? Bookstock 2020. 2020? Oh, that's not the year that we're in. I'm back in the last year. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. Yeah, I think it says 2020. Yeah, it does. It says 2020. Yeah. We're in 2020. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> okay. <laughs> if everything's the same, I um, move to approve. Everything appears to be the same. We've got everything uh, in order here. The uh, one thing on their dates, it does need to be changed. Uh, the date of event is listed, uh, Beth, as 7-3. I believe that should be 7-31. Oh, there's a one missing. Good, good And I'm going to entertain a motion to approve. I make a motion to I'll approve. Second. <coughs> Carrie, seconded by Carrie. And all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the motion carries. And next Gary, up Gary and is the uh, request to hold the St. James Annual Fair, something that's gone on for many, many, many years. Um, on July 18th from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m., now they, they uh, ask for the closure of the road, St. James Place, in front uh, uh -huh. of, they actually own the land that the fair takes place on, that uh, little green in front of uh, this, this town hall. But uh, they are asking us to close the road, which we always do. And I see no other changes, so... Um, move to approve is submitted. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Motion carries. All three permits are granted as applied <coughs> for. Okay, next we have our, uh, our police chief's report. Yes. Robbie. All the way around. Uh, just one thing I wanted to add to what Chief Green mentioned. There's uh, additional updates can be found at the Fire and EMS website, Woodstock 
Fire and EMS website, as well as all of our social media platforms, your Facebook page, Police Department's Facebook page. Um, I don't know about your Twitter or not. And the town will start. And uh, CATV Channel 8 will also carry our posts, our updates on their bulletin board. WCTV. WCTV. <laughs> Thanks, Miss. And the only person I know that's kind of happy about this is my wife because she said we have to be six feet apart now. So. <laughs> 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 she doesn't watch that channel. <laughs> uh, so, talking about um, the virus, I just want to mention also that uh, we're going to talk about trucks. As you know, there is a move foot in the legislature to repeal the portion of the statute that. Uh, requires permits for vehicles or commercial vehicles over 68 feet in length. Uh, so what we are going to do, myself and actually uh, Jeff, we're going up on Thursday to testify before the Senate Transportation Committee to try to uh, prevent that from happening and, and give them our side of the story they've heard from the trucking industry already. It's kind of an important issue for everybody here in the village. We all know what those trucks cause in terms of traffic and uh, fountain uh, quality of life issues and damage to our, to our buildings. So that's what's going on with the trucks. Um, Nick Farrell, I think, is also going to go up there. Uh, parking, the parking committee met. And with uh, we met with another parking vendor to give us a presentation of, of their kiosks. Uh, next, we'll meet and discuss some other parking alternatives. Um, Nick Farrell said that he has some ideas he'd like to present to the committee. So that the committee is moving along with uh, our objectives in terms of trying to find a solution to moving forward from what we have now to maybe something different or something better we'll find out and it's all of these are simply keeping the door open for all of the suggestions nothing we're not we haven't set you know we're not our hearts not set or on kiosks or anything it's just that happens to be one of the avenues we're exploring at this point chief sir Yes, so you're, you're, you're covering a lot of ground on the whole business. Okay. Is it? It's okay, I'm sorry. It's, it's okay. It's okay. I was okay, but it, related to what you're talking about right now, what are, what are the numbers for the parking meters for the last month? <coughs> Coming to that one. So we are, for February of 2020, we were at $7,731.95. Last year at this time, we were at $8,386.25. So again, we saw another dip in the, in the revenues and in part of that is because of the issues we're having with these meters right the batteries the maintenance on them that's sort of and that's you know part of the impetus in terms of trying to find an alternative to what we have yeah yeah also because of the, the frustration uh, that folks have with these failing meters it isn't just about the money it's, that's correct that's incidental to it's frustration on their part it's frustration on my <coughs> part or the or the parking folks part because they have to deal with with these issues on a daily basis so yeah. even getting a car into some of those meters the angling you have to it's perfect you have to be perfect to even go in and then they just get frustrated yeah. uh, and I don't know if it's all the business um, the Elm Street parking program. You want me to wait for that one, or should yeah, I? Yeah, you know, let's wait for that oh. just to continue. But <laughs> that's what other <coughs> things are. Uh, that's uh, well, that's what I have for this month. Okay. So you almost could have gotten your bike out for bike patrol yesterday. I know. I know. It's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Great. So, um, any questions for the chief? Thank you. All right. Great. Thanks. Yeah. Um, and now let's go on to the financial report. Frank, would you like to point out anything that's uh, notable on this on this report? I don't think there's any real anomalies. Um, we should be at about 67 percent. Um, there's some seasonality, and obviously, to some of the the items. Um, Could you remind us what that grant revenue was? Sure. <laughs> Thank you. I just <laughs> blanking on blanking on it when I was the grant it. fund. The grant revenue. <coughs> about seventeen thousand dollars. That is an enforcement uh, grant <coughs> that is for the police department. I think that's probably part of the governor's highway safety grant. So those are. Those are reimbursement revenues. 
That's actual income. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Why isn't that budgeted? Um, um, we didn't know we'd get it. But there's almost the identical amount is under grant expense. Is there a relation? Right, because it's a it's a reimbursable grant. So when for instance when we pay some an officer for five hours. So that was your expense and that's your that, expense and then we submit right. that okay. expenditure and, and they give us a check. These just both showed up on the same report. Okay, that makes sense to me. Thank you. Any other questions on the financial report? Okay, Frank, uh, that's that's it on on that. Um, but how about anything else that you might want to bring to your attention? I think there's only a couple of things. <coughs> um, new manager is on track. It'll be starting officially on the 23rd. Um, this, uh, on that basis, this will be my last regular trustees meeting. Um, well, it's uh, it's uh, uh, been lots of fun working with y'all, and um, I think we're excited about new manager coming aboard. I know I am. <laughs> Thank you all are. <laughs> um, Not too excited. Well, I think it's a good thing. <laughs> I really it's do. A good thing. Um, and other than that, I'm, I'm in pretty good shape. Okay. Well, thank you. This this whole whole board thanks you. you thank know, you. I've already said you. that, but you have been uh, a pleasure <laughs> to work with under, and, and you came in under a difficult difficult situation, yep. and uh, we we appreciate it very much. So. Well, I, get, I, I give you one example of how much of uh, the interesting part of what we've been doing. Um, in the last three days, the program that came together around this CV-19 stuff uh, is a testament, one, to the, the staff we have, um, but two, to the community itself. I mean, uh, I sat in that meeting the other day, didn't have to say a thing, um, and was just amazed at the way everybody worked together to unify around issues that we really need to deal with and did it in a, in a fashion that's just exemplary of the community. That's great. Uh, again, it's a great place to, to be. Great. That's great. Thank you. All right. Moving on to old business. We're just going to finish it up. Uh, anything else on Elm <coughs> Street parking? You know, I'm going to let uh, program Anna <coughs> speak to that. I'm just going to point out for folks at home and so forth, because I have heard talk about, you know, the meters and the money and so forth. Everyone should remember that those meters were put in to create turnover in the village, not to raise money. That's been incidental. And with the, the cost that these meters have cost us to run and so forth, it's, uh, uh, it hasn't been a big money raiser. However, it has provided us with the funds, the ability for Anna's, the committee Anna's heading to uh, go forward with the idea that we do have some funds available to us if we want to change things that cost money. Yeah. So, so we're, like the chief said, we're just vetting our options at this point, um, but we are heavily leaning towards the, towards the kiosk just because the the upkeep of single single head meters is is so costly, and when it comes to time and and headache of dealing with them, um, they don't function properly, and the revenues could potentially be increased with a kiosk uh, because there are some you um, some flexibility around how you structure the the uh, the rates at which you're charging people for the meters. Um, there's more flexibility in terms of programming that you can offer for locals. Um, and and if you wanted to say up the rate for a weekend when it's really busy, big tourist weekend, there's lots of flexibility with that. So we don't believe in terms of losing revenue that that will really be an issue. But again, the real focus, like what Jeff said, is we we don't want the headache and the constant um, the constant complaints about the meters anymore. And we really believe that going to you know the kiosk, which will be 50, 15 units versus however many 160, you know, to to maintain, will be so much better. And I personally think they will look much nicer. Um, so. So yeah, that's kind of where we're at. But we're again, we're looking at all of our options, and we're we're very very open to anybody's input um, about those. So it'll be much easier to move snow. Yeah, snow removal, everything will be easy. And honestly, it is 
the wave of the future. Everybody expects to see them when they go into a downtown center that has any sort of high traffic area, uh, that is any, you know, has any sort of traffic. So, um, so yeah, we're, I'm, I'm personally <coughs> excited about the potential of them. Do you think we'll have a, uh, a report in May? Or yeah, we should. Latest, we're, we're, we, we're doing kind of a rule of three in terms of getting, doing our due diligence with um, getting uh, quotes um, for the price of these newer units um, and, and really com uh, comparing and crunching the numbers so that we can justify the newer system to, you know, what we're paying now and what we would continue to pay and how we could offset that and all of that. So, so yeah, I think, I think May is, what do you think, Chief? May? I think that's <coughs> reasonable. Yeah, we don't want to rush it, but um, uh, we'd also like it to happen this year, potentially, so. Thank Great. you. Thank you. I had a question, yes, Wendy. Um, on the switch to kiosks, it just crossed my mind. Um, sometimes the parking meters come in handy for, uh, say, the courthouse when they're reserving spots for <coughs> jurors, or like when I've done the market on the green, for drop-off time, Beth and Kathy have been able to say put signs on the meter saying please don't park here temporarily so <clears throat> i mean i know it's a secondary use of the meters yeah but i just wanted to point that out in case it hasn't been brought up as something people are going to want to do and for try to figure out how to do maybe in the future hmm? yeah maybe it's cones maybe it yeah i don't know there are other ways that we can definitely block off parking spaces you know um that would, it, that would be it, just it effective, yeah. yeah, if not more. So I think that's totally doable. Mm -hmm. Good good point to take into consideration. Thank you. Thank you. And <coughs> to, to that point about jurors, there's also within these programs and the kiosks, you can actually have, you can load in your license plate if you're going to be doing jur jury duty. This is actually one of the examples that um, that the, the salespeople brought up is that you can load those in and get your parking paid for if you wanted to. But the point is the car wants to go to a certain spot. No, yeah, no, I know what your point was. Yeah, I was just yeah, saying, yeah. you know, so it, uh, it's a benefit or they want to <coughs> also. <coughs> okay, great. So that's where we're at. Okay, uh, next up is uh, town website. Now, I, I put this on there on the, our agenda because I was looking at our website this week and trying to find some things, and I found I find it to be antiquated, not Outdated. easy to go through. It's really hard, and so I'd like this board to start the push towards uh, looking at uh, a way to update our website. And I would recommend to everyone to look at the website for Belfast, Maine, because I looked at a whole bunch of them. And that is one that I just loved. If you go on any one item on it, and it, 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 government, say, village trustees say, you get to that one, you, while you're on that one, you can go to any other section right from that one immediately. You, without going back to the beginning, trying to find what you want, go somewhere else, it, it, it's, it's much easier and uh, intuitive, I think. And so that's just one example I'd like us to look at and start this conversation going forward. And, effort, and this is for both boards, because I know we have select board members here. Too. And hopefully it will be one of Bill's priorities. Priorities, I hope, yes. I think we heard that loud and clear at town meeting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, <coughs> Bill and I have had a couple of discussions. I think it would be good to begin to gather information uh, now, but kind of let him lead that charge. Mm -hmm. Well, you might write down Belfast. Right? I did. Oh, right. Thank you. It's to it's pass good. on to Bill to take a look at Yes. Um, I, think it's, I think it's a great idea, if, but if, uh, uh, if an effort is going to be put in place to um, upgrade slash change the website, I think that's a great opportunity to also um, crystallize a, a disciplined process around it as well. Uh, websites tend to have different pieces that have different owners uh, for a variety of, you know, because based on their expertise, they, they own this piece or that, or that piece. I think we should take we should take uh, we should take that opportunity to also make sure that the process around the website to make sure that it's up to date because the website can look pr great if there's no process around it, it's going to be out of date anyway and and you know my recommendation is to also really take a look at that process end to end 
and obviously there's going to be a coordinator of the website, but also the individual, the individual owners need to own up to providing updates on a timely basis, etc. Yes, that's a very, a very good point. Oh, yeah. Many, many times our, our website <coughs> is so outdated in terms of what's on it, yeah. not grown up to date. You're absolutely right. Yes, question. Perhaps we can also take the opportunity to uh, consolidate some of our web properties. We have, I believe, uh, the, wood, the the EDC is at woodstock-vermont.com. I think there's uh, there's a number of there's a number of websites and related to village and town business. Might be good to try to There is. You're make absolutely right. And if you go and look on Belfast, you'll am, see yeah. not only just government, you'll see, you know, car, you know, things going on around around town and uh, they've consolidated many things that someone, a visitor to that city <coughs> would be interested in, in uh, knowing about it. Yeah, they're just visiting something. So uh, yeah, I am in agreement with that. Um, How's the EDC website looking nowadays? EDC's website, they put a ton of money into their website. I know that. It's, it's, um, yeah. it's going to be reviewed in two weeks. So this is something uh, yeah, to, to keep in front of them as well, because they may be a right. source of funds to help us accomplish this um, in it some manner. It seems to be a priority. So that's why that's on the menu. Thank you for your participation in that. Uh, Next, I have written down community television. I understand tonight that we are live streaming. Is that correct? We are. That's great. Um, there have been difficulties in that occurring and in general. Now, Macy, this is what you're doing in <coughs> WCTV is really uh, a great boon for uh, making this meeting accessible to everyone who lives in the village or in, in the town and other meetings like this. Um, but there could be some improvements that, that have been problematic and you might need assistance in them. For instance, if I go back and I want to see a specific meeting, I find it hard to find. They're, they're kind of randomized representations of the trustees meetings, just as an example for this board. Um, at one point, I seem to remember when you could see, oh, last week's and the week before's and so forth. Is there a, a blockage to that being organized in that way going forward? <clears throat> well, we used to have a, a everything on Vimeo. We had about 5,000 shows going back to 2009 that we produced at uh, various meetings and so forth. They were all cataloged. You could go to a, a folder and see all of the uh, village trustees meetings and pick out one. Yeah, that's right. And what happened was that <clears throat> there was a lot of change in Europe about uh, proprietary information and so forth, artistic information. Uh, <clears throat> and the web crawlers started going around and picking up sites where music was unlicensed and being played. And, we got caught because um, the elementary school where they do um, show your stuff that's all canned music and so forth so they probably have 30 or 40 different recorded pieces on there that is all unlicensed and we put these things on the web so the kids can see themselves and their parents can see it grandparents and so forth and we got caught and so Vimeo at that time had a policy where three strikes and you're out. We got nailed for that. We got nailed for uh, the uh, music that was running behind uh, for the animals and um, some folk music. And we got caught because uh, they were playing Frosty the Snowman from a float on the alumni parade. Okay, these are all <laughs> licensed. So three strikes, you're out, and they took our website off the air, which was our archive, essentially, with 5,000 uh, TV, 10 years of work. We're gone. And so we switched to uh, YouTube and uh, started afresh and tried to get some of the uh, meetings from the select board and the village trustees go back for a year and put them up there uh, so you could access some of them. Uh, so that was the issue. We lost that archive, uh, which was in order to 
we create it, you're looking at 5,000 man hours of uploading all of this stuff back because you're doing it in re real time. So, for the is, most part. Is there a way to just start up now and, and get that on YouTube in a way that it could be viewed? Uh, every what, yeah, well, if you tell me what you want to have up there, we can, we can do that. When we start up and start doing all the select or the trustees meetings. Well, it's the select board, the trustees, uh, just as a uh, beginning. I uh, can't hear you. The select board, the trustees, any of the major commissions, if that you are currently filming, if we could at least have uh, one year, but you know, not not work backwards, starting now, where people have have the ability to go back and look up. Well, I'm going to take a look, but I mean, uh, Rachel basically is in charge of that. Putting stuff up, I haven't been, you know, I haven't been checking to make sure everything's going up. Well. Right, right now she's got just a randomization of uh, this meeting here, this meeting there, that's meeting there. If people knew that, they could go back and see those meetings that are important, th those meetings that meet monthly, that you are filming. Mm -hmm. If we could do that for a year and then start for the next year, I think it would be helpful to the public and those people who can't make it to the meeting. Well, sure. Yeah. I mean, that's the way it's supposed to work. Yeah. So, <coughs> it, it, could you let... Well, the other thing, too, is you, you post a link on your website of, of the meeting and so forth uh, for the select board or on the town website. I guess I guess they do that, but uh, you should be, you should be, be a whole list of uh, links that you can click on and go back and see an individual show. I can't mm -hmm. find it. Well, I, it's not on your it's website. You're, you're coming <laughs> to our website, but I mean, yeah. Yeah, we So, would it be a link to website. YouTube? Yeah, it'd be a link it would be a link to YouTube. YouTube. So, YouTube, you are able, you're able to archive all that stuff. Yeah, it's on YouTube. And it's it should be. Take it from uh, unless it didn't get uploaded to YouTube for some reason. I mean, we're we're busy, and you know, sometimes yeah. things fall between, between the cracks. But we, there are everything is archived. I mean, our whole, those five thousand shows, we still have them on. They're just not on the web. Right. They're right. on. They're on a on a uh, a RAID system. That will, you know, it's a forty-eight terabyte RAID system, and uh, you know, it's right, right. But it's not available to the public. No. No, but it could be. Misha, I thought you weren't violating copyright if you weren't making money off of yes. when the music no. was used. Uh, well, like for children replaying a song, you have to ask for. It's licensing. I used to work at a church, and we had to be very careful with the music that we used during the services. Um, and so, a lot of times, we would live stream, then cut the live stream during a song if it was something copywritten, and then cut it back on um, because they would go after churches as well. I mean, it's it's really really common. The only way you can do it is if. You take it and you put it on a password protected site um, so that it's not available to the public. Um, that's the only way that you can usually get around that. Or you pay. You. Or, you, or you pay to yeah. use it. Or you pay. Yeah. But, I mean, tell us. You have to go find who made Frosty the Snowman. You don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's very expensive. I'm sure. So I'm bringing this up uh, in hopes that uh, maybe you can pass it on to Rachel and we can start getting these things archived that are available to the public and we need to let them know that that's true too uh, somehow we need to uh, perhaps when we when we or the select board puts their uh, on the com the uh, list serve the agenda perhaps we could add a line that says if you can't make the meeting it's live streamed or you can access old meetings by looking at YouTube let's get it out there so people mm -hmm. yes people know I've watched it on Facebook. <coughs> Just saying. Yeah, yeah. Well, I know. I know. Sometimes it was being streamed live, and then there were problems. Uh, for, uh, yeah. Well, uh, what happened was Facebook changed their protocol and rendered our our old system obsolete, basically. So we we just bought a new one. And, um, <coughs> we're just getting it up to speed now. This thing supposedly has two modems you can stick right on the side of a telephone, basically, and triple your strength. One of the big problems we have with streaming is it's not the equipment that we have, it's, it's venues that we're streaming out of that has no bandwidth. You can go over the library and you get uh, a crappy signal out of one end of the building and nothing on the other end. So 
So we're working on that. And we talked to Mike Skirrell, because most of these places have Comcast uh, business class service, but what happens is they use a, a wireless router or something, and, and the signal coming to this thing is uh, not very good. Or we use the hot spot, and in here you got brick walls, you try to go through and over in the library, there's stone. So, I mean, you, you, you know, the, you might get one or two bars, and, which is not enough to run this. So this, so you're not able to stream right now? I'm streaming right now, but we're working off of your website, uh -huh. you know, the, the town <coughs> website, which we hadn't done before. With the Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi, yeah. yeah. So yeah. It's, it's, it's better than what I was trying to do with the hotspot. Yeah, yeah. So well, everybody <laughs> signed up for AC Fiber. Yes. We, um, yeah. we yeah. talked to Mike Screw about it, who's the IT guy around town, and he's uh, basically managing the system here. And uh, just took it over, and he's trying to get up to speed. And he said it'd take a couple of months to figure out what's going on in the building. And then once he does that, then he can dedicate a certain amount of bandwidth to us, so that we come in here and film. We can go out in high definition. Ooh. So that would be that would Sounds be I mean, the equipment we have is capable of doing it. <laughs> The, a lot of the venues that we shoot in are not. I don't know if I want to be in high definition. <laughs> well, uh, thank you. I just wanted to bring this up because uh, the service you're providing to this town is extremely valuable. And uh, I want to make sure that we can make the most out of it by making it accessible to everybody. One thing you should know is that there's been some changes in the industry with Comcast and so forth. They're shifting us from channel 8 to channel 1080. <coughs> And so uh, right now we're being broadcast on both 8 and 1080, but very shortly you'll lose 8, and it'll be moved to this upper tier, and we'll be at 1080. So if you That's don't find us on 8, go to 1080, if you have Comcast. <coughs> so uh, that, that would be important to put on there. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, see. Oh, I see. Where is this being live? Like, what website is this being live streamed I'm on? sorry? Oh, I'm sorry. What website is this being live streamed on? Uh, <coughs> Facebook. We, Facebook. We went back to Facebook. Okay, so it's just live streaming. On but Facebook. once we edit the program and clean up the sound and so forth, it will, it will go on, on both cable and to uh, YouTube. Okay, and do you keep it on Facebook as well? Uh, when we stream it to Facebook, it, it just streams through. It doesn't say. Oh, it doesn't say. Okay. You'll see a still photograph where it was on our Facebook page. Okay. They don't keep it's it. It's infuriating because <coughs> you're trying to click on it and it doesn't play. Um, <laughs> all right, thank you. Let's thank move you. along. Thank you, Macy. Um, okay, uh, trucking in Woodstock. Uh, Chief Blish uh, t talked to this to some extent. Um, some of us remember before there was permitting uh, for the oversized trucks in Woodstock. And it's not that long ago. We're talking about the first part of the 90s. And um, the number of trucks coming through this village was tremendous versus what you experience today. I mean, it's scary when I use my memory banks and I remember how bad it was. So it, it, it's an important issue. The, the folks who wanted to change our trucking company from uh, Rutland in particular um, are making certain claims that like uh, it's uh, the trucks can make the difficult turns without crossing over lanes, uh, which isn't true, over at Maple Fields uh, after Town Hall going towards the bridge. Um, we see them crossing over lanes all the time. But they've convinced the committee that, uh, that permitting uh, is no longer necessary because the safety issues don't exist. The roads are, in, in, they, they claim, improved. <laughs> I don't know how improved the roads are around Woodstock, but we know they're not. Um, so there's a number of issues. The chief will be talking to the committee to, to testify that the safety issues, uh, which have trucks crossing over the lane, which happens, and 11 crosswalks that they have to pass through in, in, within the village as well, um, uh, all create safety issues. But there are two, a couple of other issues as well two of which, which I would like to talk about, which is the roads themselves and the impact of these big trucks 
on our roads which are deteriorating and can't be fixed without the quote big dig which we went through that process a while back many years and found out the big dig requires such extensive work over two construction seasons that would essentially close Woodstock for two construction seasons. I don't know how many businesses could survive that. Um, and uh, there's no real effective bypass to Woodstock, as you know. I mean, we're not gonna send people on Pleasant Street and over River Street um, instead of Central Street. That's not gonna work. Um, Thank you. So, yeah, so we have to live with the roads the way they are. And the trucks do damage to the roads and to the buildings alongside the roads, the foundations of them. So we have to do our best to minimize that impact. And um, permitting has slowed down the number of trucks that come through Woodstock. Uh, the permitting doesn't cost any money. It, it, it's, 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 so, you know, that's not the stop. But the stop is that uh, they, don't, they don't want to get the permits for some reason. Chief can explain that. But it has definitely had an impact on how many trucks decide to come here versus taking another, another route. Thirdly, economic, economics. Uh, tourism is the lifeblood of this town. And we, if we go back to the numbers of trucks that we used to see in the 80s and 90s, it would not be good for the experience of people visiting here. Sometimes of year, it's the dust and dirt that accumulates on the people and on the buildings was incredible. Uh, so I'd hate to see us return to that. We're going to go do our best to convince the Senate Committee on Transportation that it's a bad idea to revoke uh, these, uh, this permitting. And um, if, even if we fail, it would then go to the House and we could try to stop it there uh, because it's, it's important. So, To whom should community members address letters if they would like to add their voice? Chief? That's a great question. Uh, I think it would be the, probably the chairperson of the Senate Transportation Committee. I, it might be Senator Mazza, but I'm not 100% sure about that. It would be Senator Mazza from, is he from Colchester or South? Yeah. He would be the one. <clears throat> the address, if you go to, I think it's uh, the legislature address. I'm trying to think of what it is. If you Google Vermont legislature, they have uh, email addresses of all the legislators on there. That's a great idea, Kerry. And yeah. then if, if folks email um, before Thursday, which is when we're going up there, that would that would be good so that he... Two, four, two days from now? Like two days from e now. Email tomorrow. Email tomorrow. Okay. That's Just right. Checking. Yeah. Email tomorrow. It's a, it's a, a big issue. Yes? So could you add to the crier the email address and a short message about that? Add to what? The list to the crier, the listserv. Um, yeah, I don't see why we, we couldn't do that. Beth, could we send a, something out, uh, the listserv from the uh, village? Um, <laughs> In the next few days? Tonight, no, it would be tonight. It would be tonight. It's not, there's sure. no bill number attached to it. Okay. What I'm talking about is the repeal of a section of existing statute, okay. Title 23, Section 14. 23, I think, same section, it's either B or C, <coughs> talks about the requirement of the permit. Okay. Mm -hmm. this, this just came up so recently that we just found out of it in the past week um, when the lobbyists who, who we pay to monitor this brought this to our attention that uh, this was happening. What's, who's, what's behind the change? Is it the driving ministry? Yes. Okay, so it's, it's our lobbyists. Yes. Okay. Just curious, how much, um, how much is the cost of a permit for a truck like that? Have, oh, sorry. The permits don't cost. Oh, they don't cost anything. Oh, no but if cost. they come through and, and uh, he also complains that there are no, there's no signs. There are signs, warning trucks. If they're not sufficient, we could put up more. But he also misled the committee by saying there are none, from what I read, okay. um, according to the lobbyist. Uh, and uh, there are signs. That, well, he did point out there's nowhere, if a truck is on Route 4 and sees the first sign, there's nowhere for him to turn around. Mm -hmm. And then he's put guys the potential of getting a fine when he gets through Woodstock. He also made the claim that uh, we give them uh, parking tickets is that right, Chief? Yeah. 
<clears throat> oh, so just to clarify, the permit is required for any commercial vehicle that's 68 feet or longer up to 75 feet. And it goes from the New Hampshire line on Route 4 to Route 100 South. And there are signs warning commercial drivers of this regulation on each end of Route 4. So there is notification of that. Yeah, and one of the claims he asserted or allegations he made was that we'll pull a truck over for speeding and then write him a parking ticket. So <laughs> it doesn't happen that way. But anyways, they have, uh, they, they certainly have uh, made a statement to the committee and, and so we're hoping to balance that out. Hope, hope they'll see it our way. See it our way. Yes. Yeah, you raised a, <clears throat> a point about the dust, which is a, a pet peeve of mine because it's avoidable. And the reason it's avoidable is that the, the materials the town uses on the road <clears throat> for sanding during the wintertime and so forth and topping off the dirt roads is a blend. Uh, it's a blend of bank run gravel and it's also a blend of manufactured gravel from the rock crusher. And what happens with a manufactured gravel, it's fractured rock and it's not washed or screened, it's screened. And what happens, you blend these things together, there's a lot of fine material in there that doesn't have to be there. Uh, the reason they do this is because it's cheaper. Uh, the uh, <coughs> manufactured gravel is a w more of a waste product from running the rock crusher that can gravel and so forth. <coughs> and so when you blend these things together, you have a sand which is bank run, it's been in water and river, river beds and so forth, it's round. It's like, like BB shots and so forth. The other stuff is like broken glass, and it gets in the air. I'm driving in this morning on Route 4, and there was a mist and coming up off the road like a fog, and uh, it, it was from the, the fines that are in this bank run, you know, this blended stuff, and you're breathing. Um, I was working outside on Peterkin Hill, right next to Peterkin Hill, working on my driveway last summer. I was out there for a week. And uh, it was very dry, and the cars were whipping up and down the road there, and they just leave you on a dust storm. And you're breathing this stuff, and after a while, your throat starts to burn from uh, from the sharpness of the, of, the, of the fines that you're taking in. I don't think it's a healthy situation, and I think from the standpoint of trying to save a buck on the uh, materials that you use uh, to mitigate icy roads and so forth. If you just stick with the bank run and leave the manufactured gravel out of it, you'd have a much better uh, situation. Well, that's a, something to bring up with our, our uh, road team and find out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> All right, so that's it on the trucking. Um, next up on old business is short-term rental applications. I think it's it's important for folks at home to know um, that uh, they have until April 30th to register <coughs> if they live in the village and intend to do any short-term rentals in 2020. And so far we've had very few. I think we've had about five, perhaps. Do you know? I think uh, Nikki told me it's somewhere in that order. David, do you know it's somewhere in that order? Yeah, five, five or six. Five or six, okay. Uh, so I'm sure there are more people who intend to do short-term rentals than that. And they uh, need to know that if they wait past April 30th, they're subject to fine under the new ordinance. And uh, so we want people to understand that they need to register. They can look on, get on the, the town uh, website and click on village and uh, ordinances and they will see the entire ordinance in detail of exactly what they need to do to register and uh, if they wait past that the fines for not registering are, are can become pretty steep and, and especially for that category versus other categories of uh, that, that might incur fines once you're registered so I urge everyone who has any idea that they might be doing short-term rentals and they have a home in the village register 
as soon as possible. You don't have past the end of this next month. Uh, and I, I, I also think it's important that we put this in the list serve to remind people and perhaps we can get the newspaper to remind people and run an article on this as we, when we hit April 1st and we have only 30 days left. I hope that the standard will make a big note of that uh, because uh, we don't want this to be a surprise. Uh, we put a lot of work into this ordinance and we had a lot of public input and we don't want people to say, oh, I didn't know about it. We really want you to know about it and to, uh, and to follow it for all the important reasons why we, we created this ordinance. So anybody else want to have anything to say on, on this subject? I, I would also just take a moment to encourage people who are, have a, a guest unit within their primary residence. So say you have a, an apartment or a rental unit in your house above your garage that's attached to your primary residence to investigate an already permitted use, which is as a bed and breakfast. We had somebody come before the VDRB two weeks ago and that use was approved and that allows you to rent it as much as you want. If it's your residence and it's within your residence and that is a permitted use within our zoning regulations. Note that you cannot have a that is kitchen. Not, that we is did not, a work <laughs> kitchen. We did not require that because it's not anywhere in our regulations. Since I believe it is a regulation. It's not in Woodstock zoning regulations, so we did not require it's it. It's an interpretation, Michael. Uh, Jeffrey, I'm sorry. It's and the, an and the Village Development Review Board did not believe oh, it. Oh, really? Zoning, planning and zoning believes it is. We. That's interesting. Okay. That's not my field. But, um, <coughs> yes, Brenda. Jeffrey, what happens if someone was to purchase a home, let's say in June, and decided that they wanted to use it for, use it for short-term rental? How would that work? Well, I believe that they can register at that time. Okay, at that Absolutely. time they can? Before they, before they advertise for short-term rental. Okay, yes. so they wouldn't have to wait till next year in April to register? No. Okay. Not. Okay, so that's uh, what I, I brought that up, and uh, I just want the public to be aware. Okay, uh, new business. Uh, one thing I want to I want to mention. I'm sure everybody wants everyone to mention is that village meeting is the 17th at 7:30 p.m. and we're going to hold it downstairs, and we urge everyone to come uh, listen about find out about the budget. Uh, we're going to vote on it as well as a number of articles. There, the uh, town, the village report is available here, of course, at town hall, but at various businesses throughout the village as well. Please read it, pick it up, read it, um, and come attend the meeting. It's 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 your village, and uh, as your elected officials, we really appreciate and want your input on that. Um, and then also remember that same day to vote between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. Three folks are running, and all three of them are here tonight, which is very nice. So I see Brenda Blakeman and Daphne Lowe and, and Seton McElroy are all running for a village trustee. So please come and vote between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. It's not, it's really short, it's really easy because you're not voting for a lot of things. That's, that's, that's it, what you're coming to town hall to vote on is, is a trustee. So please do that and then come to the meeting in the evening. Um, the only other, any other new business to be brought up? <clears throat> I was just going to mention, Macy, it's maza at ledge.state.vt.us to preserve the required permits for 60 to 75 foot trucks along Route 4. In Woodstock. In Woodstock. Yeah. Great idea. All right, other business. I just want uh, this board to be aware, to remember. Uh, that we will be discussing next week. Um, <coughs> that Carrie, you are taking <coughs> on boards and agencies. Yes, I'll be calling in. I'm be in New Mexico. Okay, you're taking on boards and agencies from New Mexico. Do you want to switch that to Anna, who had miscellaneous? It doesn't matter. Would, you, would that be a problem for you, Anna? I think that would run better in, in person. Sure. Let it go. What? No, I'm saying that her it yeah. pass both. You, you don't have to call. You can do miscellaneous on the call. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, miscellaneous <laughs> is way easy. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, <laughs> I'm doing so highway. And you're doing police. Oh, right. <laughs> 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 so 
Thank you. Highway. I'll be doing general government. All right. So, uh, I'm doing highway. Is there any any other business to come before this board before uh, we go to the approval of minutes, uh, past minutes? If if not, uh, you're welcome to sit through that exciting part of the meeting. And uh, otherwise, thank you for being here tonight. Um, so let's go through the minutes. Now, Nikki's not here, and she did these minutes. She's never made an error, and now here tonight I found a few. So, uh, so that's why she's not here, right? She knew. She missed she it. She knew. No, okay. She put not, too much information. None of them are that big. Uh, for one thing, the very first one, February 11, 2020, I would like to point out that uh, Seton McElroy's name is M-C-I-L-O-R-Y, not just M-C-L-O-R-O-Y. That's, that's uh, right in the top of in terms of what's present. And, uh, and then it occurs later in there. Uh, I'll point it out where I can find it. Um, under number 97 of these minutes, I'd like a correction to be made that's, that people have until April 1st to register for short-term rentals. That should have said April 30th. You just said April 1st again before. No, he said 30th. He said 30th, then he said 1st, and then I was confused, and then he, now you just went back to 30th. I thought I said 30th, but anyway, it's the 30th. It the okay. 30th. have until the 30th. That did happen, right? I don't Thank know. You. Thank you. I have a correction. Yep. <laughs> yes. Well, while you're looking for your correction. No, um, I was just kidding. I was correcting you. <laughs> you know. It's a long day. Girl, it's getting man. longer. All right. Yep. Uh, number 194 is the other place where McElroy spelled wrong. And then um, in number 200, basically. Number 200, um, that an, is an important one. The. Uh, where it states that the village passed a dangerous and vacant building and property ordinance. It was actually the town that passed the dangerous and vacant and building property ordinance. It does apply to the village as well to the town, as the town. But that was, uh, a, that's a town ordinance as opposed to a village ordinance. I have no other corrections on that to those particular minutes. If anyone else doesn't, do I entertain a motion to approve them? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Uh, aye. aye. Okay, those minutes are approved. Um, next we have uh, February 18th, the uh, joint, special joint meeting with the uh, board of select, the select board. Um, and I have uh, on number 135, Mr. Di Natale. Um, I think that should be changed to Ms. Di Natale. Yeah, that sounds right. <laughs> uh, that is how I identify. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's not, not Mr. Di Natale. No. Well, sometimes you remind me of your dad. But no, I'm uh, sorry. I'm going to take that off the record. Please. <laughs> <That's, laughs> <at least, laughs> take it off the record. Please. All those in favor of approving those minutes? Aye. With corrections? Um, second. Second, okay. This, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you, aye. Passes. Um, and do we have another one? That's February 18th. I believe that is it. Um, I would entertain a motion to adjourn pending uh, review of expense So much. Second. Second. In favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you all very much for attending the village meeting.